Welcome to a code report algorithm video. In this video, we're going to be covering two algorithms from the STL algorithm library, std generate and std generate underscore n. For std generate, we have an algorithm that assigns the value returned by successive calls to gen to the elements in the range first to last. And note that for the declaration of our algorithm generate, our first uh, templated uh, type is a forward iterator. If you're not familiar with iterators, take a look at this video here, which explains the differences. And the parameters of our generate algorithm are uh, two forward iterators, first and last, that point to the begin and end of our range, and then the generator. For std generate underscore n, we have an algorithm that assigns the value returned by successive calls to gen to the first n elements of the sequence pointed to by first. And note that for the declaration of this algorithm, we don't have forward iterators as our first uh, templated type. We have output iterators. Then our second uh, templated type is uh, size, and the third one is gen. And the parameters for our algorithm are an output iterator uh, first, then size n, and then our generator gen. So let's take a look at a couple simple examples. So here we have uh, two functions. At the top of each, we are declaring a vector of integers. For use generate, we're using the fill constructor. So we're going to uh, initialize this to have 10 elements. And then on the second line, we make our call to generate. We pass at the begin and end iterators. And then our third parameter is a lambda, which is going to be our generator. And we initialize in the init list an integer 0. And then for each call to this lambda, for each element basically here, we're doing a pre-increment on i and then returning the current value of that integer. And we have something very similar in our second function, but instead of making a call to the fill constructor on our first line, we're making a call to the default constructor. So initially the size of this is going to be set to zero. And on our second line, we make a call to generate underscore n. And instead of passing it uh, begin v, we pass it a back inserter v, which is going to give us an output iterator uh, to the end of our currently empty vector. Then we pass it the number of elements that we want to do this for, in this case n. And then we have the exact same lambda that we had in our first function. And at the end of both of these functions, we have a simple print uh, method, which is going to print out the elements with spaces between them. And this is going to give us, for both of the functions, uh, 1 to 10, pretty simply like this. So hopefully this makes sense. We take a look at a slightly more complicated example, but very, very similar. Uh, use generate underscore abc and use generate underscore n underscore abc. So here we're declaring vectors of strings, uh, once again using the fill constructor for the generate and the default constructor for our generate underscore m. And we basically have the same thing for the first two parameters, but for our lambda, it's slightly different. We have a string and a character in our init list of our lambda. And then for each call to our lambda, we do a pre-increment on our character, which is uh, going to turn this on its uh, first call to a lowercase a and then a lowercase b. And then for the string, we do a plus equals of the current character. So this is going to end up outputting the following, a, a, b, a, b, c, a, b, c, d, and a, b, c, d, e. And note that we changed n here from 10 to 5 between our two examples. So this demonstrates the functionality. It's a pretty simple algorithm just used to basically set up the values in your data structure that you have uh, declared. And the next thing to do is to talk about what is the difference between these two other than uh, the signatures of them. So I profiled these because I wanted to see which one was more efficient. And I thought that use generate underscore would be more efficient due to the fact that in our use generate algorithm or our generate algorithm, uh, example, we have to make a call to our fill constructor, which is basically going to initialize the uh, values of whatever the type of our vector is uh, to the default value. So if we go back to our first example uh, here, it's going to use the fill constructor and then set the value of each of the integers in our vector to be equal to the default value, which is zero. And then on the second line, it's going to come through and reset them uh, between 1 and n. Here, in our profiling example, we've changed n to 10,000 to make it a little bit more uh, meaningful. And, and so we're basically doing this unnecessary initialization in use generate. Uh, so I figured that the way, you know, without looking at generate underscore n, the way that this works is, you know, it's basically going to be the same thing, but it's going to avoid this initialization. And so once I profiled them, I saw something interesting. 
And you can see here that the use generate underscore n uh, algorithm is much less efficient. And you can see here, this is basically a, a control case. Use iota is the same thing as use generate, but it, instead of using generate, it uses iota, which uh, if you're not uh, familiar with this algorithm, take a look at this video here, uh, but it basically it does the exact same thing as the generate. So why is the generate underscore n so much slower than the generate algorithm? And after I had looked into this a little bit, it became abundantly clear what was going on. And the first time I had actually heard about this was in a CppCon uh, talk in 2014 that was given by Chandler Carruth. So here is a snippet from that talk where he is talking about the problem that we're seeing here. So here is a very basic code. Does anyone here think that this code is slow? Got some hands. OK. So, so you'll probably know exactly what I'm, looking, I'm going to suggest doing. I'm going to suggest that you know, we don't actually need to, to allocate memory every time we do pushback. We can reserve it ahead of time. We know how many elements are coming in. We can jump right to the end and just have the memory available. So all we need to do, according to Chandler Carruth, is we need to reserve on our vector in our second function here. So if we add a v.reserve, uh, in our second function, hopefully we should see the speed up and we are now going to match the performance of our first function use generate. So once I profile this, we have the following. So you can see that there's a speed up in between our use generate underscore n and the one with the reserve, but there's still a significant difference between our use generate and our use generate underscore n. So I looked into it a little bit further, and what's going on here is actually a little bit surprising, or at least it was to me. Uh, when we make calls to reserve, uh, this method here, what we're doing is we're basically uh, allocating memory up until the amount that we have reserved for. Uh, and so this is going to reset the capacity, but it's not going to reset the size. So there's two things that you can end up doing when you uh, make calls to pushback other than inserting the element. You are potentially making a uh, memory allocation and you're definitely going to be increasing the size uh, by the number of elements that you're adding. So when you make a call to reserve, you're increasing the capacity, but you're not increasing the size. So even when we have a use generate underscore n with a reserve, we are still doing a plus plus to our size every time we do a pushback. So the next thing that I did was I went back to our example and then I added a v dot resize uh, to the second example. And once you add this line, we can then match the performance of our generate algorithm. So I found this really interesting. Uh, it was a bit surprising because I was expecting generate underscore n to be more efficient, uh, but that is completely not the case. So I think the moral of the story here is prefer the generate algorithm if you can. Uh, I guess it makes sense that it is not doing the reserve and, and the resize as a part of the uh, generate underscore n algorithm because it's a generic algorithm and not all, and not all data structures have those resize and um, reserve methods. That's specific to vectors. So if you're dealing with a set, uh, for instance, you're not going to be able to do that because those aren't uh, cache coherent data structures anyway. So that it totally doesn't make sense. So if you're implementing this generic algorithm, you're going to have to have behavior like this. So if you're dealing with vectors and you want to use generate, uh, lean towards the uh, generate algorithm and sort of avoid the generate underscore n. Uh, and, I, and I'm sure there's other use cases where the generate underscore n is needed, but you're not able to get the behavior you want with just a generate algorithm. And there's one last thing to mention, and that is that when you increase the size of n to something like 10 million, which I did, you will see the following happen. And what happened here was that the algorithm generate versus the algorithm generate underscore n with reserve, uh, the efficiency of those converged. And this makes sense because when n's extremely large, uh, the efficiency that you lose due to memory allocations is going to be much more significant than efficiencies that you lose due to increments. So we see a convergence in uh, the efficiencies of generate underscore n with a reserve 
uh, compared to generate, but we won't see that convergence obviously for generate underscore n. So that's just something to keep in mind. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.